Hello everyone, my name is Michael McKinn, and welcome to this Wayward at Company tutorial on cartoon and cell shading in Blender. Here I have a rigged character in a graveyard scene, and while this tutorial was made with the game engine in mind, these effects do show up in the viewport, so you could also use this to render out animations in Blender internal. You can also download this blend file from the Wayward Art Company Facebook page in case you want to take a closer look at the setup. So to start I'm going to select my character and then go down to select and choose inverse which selects everything else and then hit H to hide. And now I can just work on this character without any distractions from the background. I want to split my view and then open up the node editor. So my character already has a material assigned to him with a texture. Uh, so what I want to do is create a new material. And this one I'll be able to edit in the node editor. Uh, so I'm just going to call it character nodes. So here you have this small little button. I'll zoom in so you can see. It's just there and if you press that then you can see your nodes in the node editor. And now I have to apply that new material so I'll tab into edit mode and then assign that new material to the mesh. Now on my material node, I want to scroll through and find the original material that was assigned to my character. And also select that same material on the right hand side. And I'm going to take my specularity all the way up and change the style to tune. I'm going to take the smooth slider and move it all the way down. And if you can't see what that did, it sort of sharpened up this edge. And just to show you, I'll, I'll slide it up and and then back down so it gives you that nice cartoon edge and then I want to increase the size a little to to sort of broaden the surface of the specularity then under the diffuse settings I also want to change that to tune and then take the size up to three now you can see the whole character looks a little orange and that's because even though I hid those lights they're still in the scene and they're still affecting the mesh. So if you're not really familiar with using nodes, um, you know, I'll, I'll go through this pretty slowly. It's really easy to do and it's a lot of fun. You basically have this material and then the output which shows that material on your your mesh. So I want to hit Shift A and then go to Input Geometry. and now go shift A input texture. Now in my textures I want to select the texture that's already applied to the mesh and take the UV output of the geometry node and plug it into the vector of the texture node. Then take the color and plug it into the specularity of the material node. And to illustrate what that has done I'll add another lamp to the scene and so by plugging that texture into the specularity on the material node using UV coordinates, you've essentially made it so that, you know, the, the color of the specularity on his jacket will be the color of his jacket. And the color of the specularity on his face or on his skin will be the color of his skin. And that sort of gives it an inked or sort of comic book style cartoon shading. Uh, to illustrate this a little further, I can uncheck the texture so that it isn't visible on the mesh anymore. Uh, and then move the lamp out. And as you can see, you can still sort of make out the texture, but that's because of the way the mesh is reacting to the light. The texture itself, you know, isn't visible at all. And you can intensify this pretty easily too. Uh, if I go back to my nodes, I can ch hit shift A and add color and then hue saturation 
Now if I raise the saturation and the value sliders, I can intensify the color of the character's specularity. Okay, and that looks pretty good. Uh, now I can go ahead and turn that texture back on. And there you can see the full effect. And I can really see making a game with some hand-painted textures and, and having it be really stylized with this kind of uh, you know, cartoon technique. And I think it could be really interesting. But it's not exactly what I want for this game. So I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to leave my nodes the way they are. And I'm going to type Shift A, and then go to Vector, and then Normal. Now I want to plug the normal output from the geometry node into the vector of the normal node. And then take the dot value and plug it into the normal input on the material node. Now I'm just going to make a little room because the next node is sort of a large one. Go to Shift A, Converter, Color Ramp. Now as I slide the, the black value closer to the white, the model will start to display sort of a, a black border around it uh, which gives it a cell shaded type look. So I'm just going to continue tweaking the strength until I find something that I'm happy with and then I'm going to go under this interpolation menu and I, I choose cardinal. You could sort of experiment with some of these. They all have slightly different effects uh, but, but cardinal usually I think works the best for, for me. And now I'm ready to test this out in the game engine. So I'll go into my camera view and hit P to play. And now you can see that I have this black line that sort of changes dynamically as my camera rotates around the character. It's important to note that you need a lot of light in your scene. And so even in, in this scene, you know, I have all of my textures baked out. Um, I still kept the lights in because without the lights, you wouldn't really see the effect of this cartoon shading very well. So now I'm going to work on the rest of the scene, uh, but I need to do it a little differently. And to, to demonstrate why, uh, here you can see that I've added this cell shaded effect to Suzanne. Now I'm going to add a cube. And I'm going to select the cube and then select Suzanne and hit Control L and link the materials. Now you can see how different those two objects are behaving with that material. Uh, you know, Suzanne's works really well, but because the cube has such sharp angles, it just doesn't work the same. So I'm going to be doing this a different way. Along with the character, the trees will also get that same kind of material because, uh, you know, they have a lot of geometry and a lot of curves. But the scene itself is made up of mostly cube-like shapes. So in order to, to give a black border around this, I need to do something different. So as you can see, most of the objects in the scene are all one mesh, just one object. So I want to hit Shift D in object mode to duplicate it. Now I'm going to give it a new material. And I'm going to make it all black and make it shapeless. Now I'll assign that material to the mesh. Now I'm hitting N to bring up this menu. I'm going to scroll down until I find shading and then check back phase culling so that you can see this in the viewport. And I'm going to flip the direction of those normals. So now if I hit Alt S, I can scale this object along the normals so that it's slightly larger than the original mesh. And now in the toolbar I can, I can uh, make some fine tune adjustments here on the side. 
Uh, but now, you know, the objects in my scene have this nice black border to them. I used this example in my texture painting tutorial uh, at the end. Um, and I'll say again that, you know, using this technique does create twice as many vertices <laughs> for, for that object. So, you know, if you have a really complex scene, it would be really hard to do this and, and you know, keep your vertice count down. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Also, if you have any transparent images in your scene, you should paint a black border around them, and that will give uh, you know, them more of a cartoon kind of look. So that's it, guys. I mean, I, I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. Again, the blend file will be available on my Facebook page, so just go there and give it a like so that you'll be notified when I add more content to the page. Also, follow me on Twitter, where I'll be dropping hints on future tutorials. I already have something in mind for the next in the series of the Game Engine tutorials. I think I'm going to continue along with this advanced material shaders in, in the Blender Game Engine. So, um, so, you know, until then, I'll see you next time, and thanks for watching.